Hello everybody, welcome back. Here with me is Pampar to teach you how to create a spooky witch. Now I'm gonna go over all of my materials very quickly and then we'll go ahead and get started. So first I have my eight by 10 canvas panel, but of course you can work on any canvas size that you want. My paints today, I only have three. Um, now if you don't have this kind of purpley magenta color, which we call fluorescent violet, you can mix up some, either some pink or some purple using some red and blue and white or just some red and white for the pink. Now we are also using black and white as well. And I am also using some paper plates on the side to make sure that my main palette stays nice and fresh. My three brushes that I'm working with today, I have a big brush, a medium brush, and a small brush. I'm gonna put those in my water vessel that you should have. And I also recommend grabbing some paper towels to dry off your brushes when you take them out of the can. With that, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to be mixing up the purple color in my background first with my big brush. Make sure that's dry. And I'm gonna grab a little dash of white and big, big, big heaping scoop, maybe even two scoops of that fluorescent violet, pink, purple, whatever color you have for your sky. First thing we wanna do is draw out where our moon is going to be. It's gonna be right in the middle of your canvas now, if you have anything that you can trace, I recommend to do so because circles tend to be a very tricky um, shape to do. So maybe like a paper plate, a ramekin, anything you have that's circular that you're okay getting paint on, feel free to trace it, or you can just freehand it and see what happens. I recommend starting with a larger circle and then you can always make it smaller if you need to. And I want a good, maybe like two inches of this color, um, two inch ring around my moon, leaving almost just the corners of my canvas left unpainted. Now we're gonna get a clean brush and we're gonna get some black paint. With the black, we're gonna start along these corners and when you get close to that purple pinky color, you're gonna to wanna to very lightly blend the two together in the middle. Now maybe your purple paint dried up a little bit and it's not blending for some reason. Um, go ahead and grab some more purple paint on your brush and that should help to blend it all together. Now we're gonna go ahead and focus on the inside of the moon we want to make it look like there are a bunch of craters. So what I'm going to do is grab my medium brush and I'm going to fill the entire thing up on the inside with white paint first. You want to make sure to be careful when you go around those edges so you don't actually pick up that purple paint. While that paint is still wet, we're going to grab just a very small touch of black on our brush. Um, I'm not cleaning off my brush, it can still have white paint on it. And we're only going to be dipping it in the black one time, never twice. Starting over here on the bottom right area of my moon, I'm going to be doing these little dabs, these little twists, and then we're going to be working our way away from that point towards the middle, towards the edges, to get some texture and some craters in our moon. And there you go, you have yourself a little moon. Now we're gonna be focusing on some stars. So all we need to do is take our small brush and we're actually gonna be using the handle of our brush. You're gonna dip it in your white paint and you're gonna poke where you want your stars to be. And now we're gonna be taking a dry break. If we add any paint on top, it will become pretty muddy. Give yourself about 10 to 15 minutes and then we'll come back together. All right, once your painting is dry, we're gonna go ahead and get started with the witch in the center of our moon. We're gonna be using our small brush to draw her out. And we're gonna be using some black paint. I'm gonna to try to break this down into the simplest shapes as I can. So first we're gonna start with the broom. The broom will be the easiest part. So we're gonna be drawing a diagonal line towards the center of our moon here going slightly upwards. I want to have a really long broom. 
makes it very aerodynamic. <laughs> Now for the actual piece at the end, I'm going to put a couple of lines here for the part that connects the actual broomsticks. And then I'm just gonna draw a couple of lines that kind of mush together in a fan-like pattern to make the broom. Now for the witch. I'm going to be starting with her upper body and we're going to be doing slightly like a stick figure here. So I have a line that's going to go straight up in the middle of my broom. Then I'm going to be putting a circle for the head over here on the top, slightly to the right. For the legs, I'm going to have it come across and then down towards the broom end. And for the arms, I'm going to have an arm kind of making a triangle right here. And then the other arm is not going to be completely straight. It's going to come out and then bend a little bit forward. Now we're going to go ahead and thicken up parts of the body. So I know that my top area is going to be a little bit thicker than the waist. I'm going to be bulking up this area here for her skirt. I'm going to add some flowiness to the skirt down here. head. I might make her have more of a chin as opposed to just a circle. Maybe a little triangle down at the bottom. All right, that is the body for my witch. Next, we're going to be doing the hat. So for the hat, we're going to start with a line going across the head. That's the rim of the hat. And then at the top of your hat, you're going to very, you're going to use really, really thin pressure, light pressure. And then as you work your way down, you're going to use heavier pressure and wiggle it. And you have yourself a little witch's hat. Last step is the hair. It's flowing all the way back. So we're just going to draw really thin lines out and away from the back of the head. And there we go, we have a witch. Now, next step, still using the black paint, we're gonna be drawing in some trees down below. I'm gonna start with the base trunk for my tree. I have one over here on my right. You can see I keep it nice and pointy and thin at the top, and I get a lot thicker down at the bottom, all just using pressure on my brush. So thin pressure at the top, heavy pressure at the bottom. Then we can branch out, literally. Um, when I think of branches, I like to think of a banana peel or merging onto a highway. You just want to make sure you don't have any 90 degree angles. You can see it just gradually glides onto the trunk. We have one more step to go, and that is the little glittering stars that are in our sky. So I'm actually going to be making a very, very pale pink. So I'm just going to be adding some more white paint to the color I used for my background. Like it's something like this. We're going to be making a crisscross shape. A little crisscross. And then we're going to be rounding out these inside corners. Thank you. 
and you did it. You have created a very own spooky witch grave for the spooky season. I hope you had a really fun time. I sure did. And of course, when you're done, you want to make sure you sign your painting. You can sign it wherever you wish, but most people like to sign it in the bottom right hand corner with their small brush in a color that stands out nice and bright. Feel free to post them on social media and don't forget to tag us at news underscore paint Barn so we can check them out. I'm sure everybody will be very impressed. Of course, if you really love this tutorial and want to see more from us, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel and we'll see you again next time.